Hey everyone, it's Joe and Isaiah here from The Automator. And in this video, you're gonna learn how to auto-execute a class, which you would think is simple, but we're not doing it the way you're probably thinking we're doing it. Um, and if you stick around to the end, you're gonna learn how to use static methods and get them to work in version two of AutoHotKey. So basically, uh, we have a, a, a class here that had, contains a few things. And I was just uh, trying to explain that this, this file only has a class, but when you double click it, it goes ahead and performs an action. Now, here's the thing. I was trying to explain what, what, is, what is to be expected. What is the thing that should happen? What most of the people are commonly aware of. So when you have, um, a, let's do it in AutoHotKey version one. Yeah. You have a class, let's call it my class, right? And you go ahead and create a function. My function is gonna be my test. A method. Right. Our method, yeah, it is a method in this case. Um, and you have a message box true here. You will have, uh, let me save this file. Um, this is going to be test.hk. Now, if I double click that file, nothing happens, right? So let's go ahead and do this. Yeah, sure. Right? Okay. And it is a right. right. Yeah. What you would do is that you would add the new instance, uh, the new okay. meta, yeah. meta function. Right. You go ahead and say, uh, call this does dot my test, right? So that should, whenever you instantiate a class, so whenever you create an object from it, it would go ahead and call the test method automatically. Yeah. But for that to work, I would have to say object. Right. Yes. My yeah. class. Still have to instantiate right. it. So, yeah. so I have to create a, right. a line in my class that goes ahead and does that. So let's try that. If I go ahead and double click that, it should go ahead and show me the message box, right? Okay. So basically, okay, I just made sure that when I create an instance, it goes ahead and calls the method, fine. But in here, I don't have an instance. How does it goes ahead and... Okay runs anyway, right? Right. And this is what I was trying to tell you. You could create a whole program, so to speak, as an object and have an auto-execute section automatically. The way how you do that is creating a static near. So so in my case, I'm actually creating a new instance. And for that, I have to instantiate it with the new keyword yeah. to do that. But if I make that method static i don't know if this is an auto hotkey version 2 thing only i will try it now but basically uh -huh. what it does it what it tells is that thing is going to be loaded at the beginning when, whenever you double click yeah. right so now this whole thing becomes an auto execute section for your for your object technically yeah. and what happens is that now um if i go ahead and let me reopen the folder now, let me see what happens in auto hotkey version one here. So, it, and oh, hold on. No, 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 no. This actually worked. The only thing is that instead of calling this here, I have to call it, uh, this has to be static as well. So this static, well, that's because I use it like that, but this static method can only call static method, methods. Okay, all right. I can call, instance methods but I, that that is a different topic but in general i just have to make the the thing static and now if i go ahead and double click notice that it actually went ahead and oh. ran and got the, yeah, yeah now yeah. but hold on the problem is i i know what is going on uh the the new auto hotkey version automatically assumed that this is version two so let me force it. Oh. Right. So yeah. it automatically right. assumed because notice that every time I was double clicking before, it, a little pop up was showing right. up. No, no, it was actually a pop up asking me which one to choose. Let me let me just do that. I didn't actually see it. Right, right. Let me let me just do it just in case you didn't notice. So basically, right now, this could be version one and version two at the yeah, same I get time. It. Yeah. And it actually goes ahead and tells oh, me okay. right. to yep. version one or version two. I was doing version one nothing happens as soon as i did static here instead of asking me it just what it did is it, it. there yeah. is an error on the code right. so it automatically detected it as version two so this is something okay. that would only work on version two but this is a very interesting concept that you could the new 
meta function could be made static. And remember, the static variables and static things that you do inside a function, they get loaded as before the script starts, right? Yeah. Yeah, so which is why you called it an auto exec section is because right because basically I'm just behavior. making this whole uh -huh. this whole function to be executed as soon as I double click, which is what is happening here. I just okay. created a static function that goes ahead and um, selects a file, and after you select the file, goes ahead and performs an action. This is what I meant. This particular method that I'm doing here. Yeah. Even though I'm a, as a static, um, when when you call something that is static, whenever you refer to this, you're referring to the instance. It's yeah. called, sorry, to the class itself, not to the instance. But this particular method here is not available to the class. It's available only to the instance because I didn't make it static. That's what is going on. So let me not go too deep into that because the main idea that I was trying to explain was this. But if you want to understand what I'm talking about in general, um, in version two, you have static methods and not static methods. The ones that are not static are not available to the class. So you cannot say like W tabs in this case, W tabs. You cannot do that because it's going to tell you, hey, that method that you're trying to access is not available to the class. That is available to the instance, to the object of this class. And if I, but I could say load here. So you see the static method here? Yes, I could call the class and call the load because it is a static method. If yeah. it is static because it exists yeah all right 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 now the other way around is true if you have an object so if you just have an object uh let's say that you say tabs equals w tabs so now that you have an object here tabs itself cannot use load csv notice this one here you cannot access it any of those static functions and not be accessed by the object itself. The only thing that it has access to is the load and the get. Okay. Those are the only two that it could access by itself because those are not static. And then that's that's a very tricky thing. In, in, and, and I'm really glad that this is new in Auto Hotkey version two, because in other languages you have what is called private and um, public. Oh, public. Yeah, right. Right. Yeah, I've heard it. I've just never understood right, it. Right, exactly. So basically, this is something similar. What I'm doing is these are public methods that people could access when they instantiate my object. So when they create an object with my class, they have access only to these public methods. Okay. Now, the ones that are static, you cannot access them unless you're calling the class itself like this. And that in itself is great. There are certain situations in which I want this type of things to happen. And I want to limit what you can access. I, I believe I, I understand, yeah. Right, so if I make changes to the code, it will not affect you as much, that's all. Yeah. Because you only have access to these kind of things. This thing, fixed title, I don't want you to have access to that because that's something right. internal that I'm doing. So right, if, right. how I fix the titles, it shouldn't break your code because you have well, never talked about that function. That's what it's and, going on. And what you have to, correct me if I'm wrong, this is where not being a programmer, you know, it's a little harder for me to grasp. But, because clearly anybody who has this overall file can see the stuff, whatever. But you're yeah, talking about when this is passed as an object, right? then as a method, like these methods right. would be available right. to exactly. you. Okay, Definitely. right. I'm so with right you. now... It, yeah. it, right now, you can definitely in your code just go ahead and say W tabs. So that's the name of my yeah. class. So and just say get index directly. You can do that, and and I don't stop you from that. And that's not what I care about. What I care about is that when you go ahead and create an object like this, when you create an object, and that is my W tabs. So just created an object. Now that object, I want to limit it so that later on. Um, 
if I make changes to the class or if you, your code is not going to break because you're using an object that is going to only access certain things that as I know that they're public, I'm not going to change them very often, you know, and I'm not going to make this to that in a way that is going to break, you know, that's yeah, what and, and maybe, maybe this is actually even more, I was going to say maybe it's a bad uh, simile, but, or comparison, but um, maybe it's actually a better comparison, but popped in my head because when we first kind of started down this path, we were talking about uh, Zoom and creating an app for it and stuff, and what where I was going, I was like, oh, it's kind of like an API call. And I'm like, hey, Zoom might make certain things internal that the people at Zoom can do with their object, but right. we don't have actual methods. We can't do them, right? Exactly. And I'm like, exactly. And then when exactly you said that internal right. and public or um, right. private That's public, exactly. I'm like, it makes a lot, to me, it's even easier to understand of and, like. And, and, and the know. way of doing that is like you say, right. okay. I want to get a JSON that gives me a list of uh, registrants. I don't care how I get that. I just want that. Mm -hmm. Zoom, on the other way, says internally, we take it with an XML, but later they want to change it and move it to something else. I want to change it to JSON, right? In the end, the user doesn't see the difference because I'm getting you what you want, but the way how I'm getting the data might be efficient. I, I could make it more efficient and those kind of things. So that's the reason why these type of things happen. Like the reason why I'm doing this coding here is that now I'm forcing an instance of the method of the class. I'm just forcing an instance of the class to access this thing that can only be accessed by objects. The class itself doesn't have access to that. So don't get confused by that. But in general, the main idea was this. This is static new here. It's amazingly cool because now I have an auto execute section for my objects and I could create a whole program. That's what I did. This right. is a whole program created as objects in a way that allow me to just have it there, um, and 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 the reason why automatically, I, yeah, right. The reason why I created this one as an object is because of unit testing. So all of my methods, all of all, all of these methods down here, I have something that is actually um, doing kind of like tests for it. So basically, what is going on is that now. Um, all the time I could just double check if my object is working fine. And it would just go ahead and tell me whenever I make changes to my object, it would tell me if something broke on my object. That's what is going on. So whenever I make changes to my object, I know if there's things, that's the reason why I wanted to have an object, but I wanted to also have that object execute by itself, right? right. So I didn't want to just go ahead and, so in general, that was just what I wanted to share. It is an interesting concept, yeah. and yeah. So for those of you who, this is way over your head, our <laughs> objects course, which I'll put the URL below me here, uh, really it doesn't cover this exact topic, but we do talk about methods, or I should say Isaiah talks about methods and objects and stuff. And then also we have a lot of videos, I'll put the URL here on V2, which is, this is one of those compelling reasons of if you're into this kind of stuff, version two allows for things that version one you can't do. Exactly. All right. Cheers. Bye.